Well, there was no stopping the conservatives and there was no stopping our real estate either. This month, we did something not even I thought was possible. Check into this month's update to learn all about it. Okay, well, the election is over. It's basically status quo. And well, Albertans are back to business. What do you remember me asking you last month if the election would redirect the attention of Albertans away from their real estate? Well, time was going to be the only thing that provided us that answer. And now we have it. Drum roll, please. Not a freaking chance. It was actually the opposite. I'm here to report that May 2023 goes down as the highest selling May of all time. Yep, even higher than last year, which had shattered all prior records. This surprised even the heck out of me, who, if you followed our updates, I'm a major advocate for the power of our market based on all the fundamental data we've been seeing emerge all year long. Well, let me add some context to why this even shocked me. January had 40% less sales this year than in 2022. That was a big drop. February had 47% less. March had 40% again. April had 20% less sales. And then seemingly out of nowhere, May comes along with 2% more than last year. This continues to show the absolute continued momentum, continued build of strength, of buyer demand we have in the greater Calgary area. And here on this graph, you can see how it's been in comparison to recent years. This block of three big years in a row simply towers over most of the last decade and should give us all massive confidence in Calgary real estate. See, this is a 100 home a day selling pace versus a 90 sale a day pace from April and then an 80 sale a day pace back in March. Now, as always, this is the total picture. But when we drill down further, you see more of the 2023 story appear, which is the majority of our increased demand in buyer activity is still being driven by our apartment sales. Apartments sold 36% more than they did last year at the same time, which is the real master puppeteer of this show this year. Detached and rows, they're selling about 10% less, and then semis about, again, 5% more. Okay, well, with those sales summaries now behind us, let's again check on if we finally started to see more properties come to the market for us to choose from and to handle all of this demand. This graph shows here the year-to-date figures as of May in terms of new listings. If you look to the far right, this is about equal to the last 10 years. So at the first glance, this would lead us to believe that new listings aren't a problem. Sure, not as high as the last two years, but no slouch here either. Beyond this, we started the month with 3,229 homes on the market. This was a drop of 34% from last year. And then now we ended the month at 3,207. 20 less homes on the market. Now a 39% drop from last year. So this means we continue to net out in the opposite direction of what the market really needs to handle all of this demand. Last year from April to May, despite the crazy we had, we still saw 400 more homes accumulate. This year it's zero, zilt, nada. This graph really shows the trend better than my words can speak. See, zooming in though, a little further into the property types again, detached month over month saw zero net gain. Semi-detached saw a nearly 20% drop. Row homes flat, apartments flat, meaning it's everywhere that we are seeing this occur, not just what seems to be in our hottest part of the market, which is the apartments. All right, so we've talked sales, we've talked available homes, let's talk that pricing picture, because everybody really just wants to know, is my home going up in price or is it going down? So they can either be aware of how one of their biggest life assets is doing or they can make the best decisions they can to get theirs. So looking at this graph now, point your eyes to the red line. Well, this is our benchmark price graph. What you're seeing is yes, pricing continues to trend up and up and up. I show this graph first because it gives you a little longer view on the length of time we've been trending up now and where we've really come from. Okay, let's just like pinch in, let's zoom in into this year's price graph now. You'll notice very quickly, this month over month graph is nearly linear, which simply means it is steadily increasing without much of an adjustment or slowing of the trend. As of the end of the month, we once again hit an all-time high in our city's price points. Detached homes are now 674,000, semis at 600, row homes just under 400, and apartments just shy of three, 
all new price highs in all property types. And it's also all new highs in all districts too. Check this out. But really, how can this be? And isn't the shoe gonna finally drop? Because that's what you were told would happen here, right? Well, it's not gonna happen. Basically, it can't happen. Aside from a war breaking out or a great depression level crash of sort, because this current momentum and sale value climb is not something that's been just built overnight. This is not a fad or a trend or a knee jerk feel good moment for sellers. This result has been built over a decade, nested in true economic fundamentals like I've been sharing to you guys for years. Check this graph out. This is the months of supply graph, which shares one single stat that combines the total inventory homes on the market and its current buyer demand into one stat. The lower the graph is, the faster the market. The lower the graph, the more demand is outweighing supply. See, this graph combines to give us a powerful indicator of where we sit. And when we look at it, not just on a monthly basis all by itself, but we continue to look at it and perform versus months and years and going on half a decade plus of data, you really see it's taken a long time to get us here. Meaning any worry that we adjust out of this kind of market soon and that this run is anywhere close to over would simply be headline rhetoric looking to catch eyeballs. Right now, if we didn't put another home on the market in June, we'd have zero homes left to buy by the end of this month. Now that sort of supply and demand does one thing, it pushes prices up, up, and up. But the big ass but is this is rooted in fundamentals again, not emotion, not hype. It's simply real people, real profits, real money, home by home coming here to put up roots or invest in their future. This is exactly what we want and can be confident to plan our own future around, especially in terms of our housing. Oftentimes, as we talk month of supply, we also bring up days on market. Okay. There and you convince me, I can see that I can get what I want from my home, or maybe even more. But the other question comes is, well, how fast can we get this done? Well, this is the last four months of days on market information for us to look at. We now, on average, are selling in 24 days. That means from a list date to its firm condition-free deal, 24 days. That sort of timeline is amazing for those needing to make a home sale, a home transition. That is worry-free as it gets. So to wrap up this update once again, let me leave you with this. If you were considering a purchase or a move last year at the exact same time, well, it was frustrating. Buyers were stuck in multiple offers. People paid a bit more than they wanted to get their homes, but people also gave up and sat on the sidelines awaiting the correction or the crash. But well, that didn't happen, did it? Honestly, that doesn't really ever happen when you look over more than a two to three year timeline. It is near impossible to find that in our history. Look at this sliver from the detached home charts here. Last year, when you were fed up and giving up, when it was too expensive and it was the market nobody thought we could beat, well, price was 647,000. Now it's 674. Then this one's for apartments. It was 269, now it's 299. Then we had row homes, was 359, now 390. And finally, semis, well, it was 581, now it's six. No matter how you shake it, making your move is better to do despite the intensity than simply trying to pause and wait. We just showed it. We don't know exactly what's coming, but we do know real estate is a long game that in the end always wins. The pain to get in, I believe, is always easier than the pain to losing on the future upside like I just showed. And guess what? Historically, the gains we just had as a city is under the 40-year average. Yes, a year-over-year -year citywide gain of 2.6% is way below norm. So I'm speaking from my industry experience to you. I'm shouting out to you via the actual data. And I'm also putting my own money where my mouth is. And I'm buying and continuing to buy in this market. And I don't plan to stop. My motto is get more assets in the market and then just let time do its thing. Well, so once again, that's it for today. Thanks for watching us here on Redline TV. If you're in need of some help from your specific situation, just drop us a comment or email us again at inquire at redlinerealestate.ca so we can hook you up with the specialists from our group of agents of over 90 in the region. And of course, like this video, drop me a comment, share it with friends. You no need to hear this.
See you again next month.